The hands-on exercise in this course will ask you to add in a custom domain to Azure Active Directory, add a user to your Azure Active Directory, configure multi-factor authentication, add in a gallery application, and finally add a custom web app. So again, what we'll ask you to do is pause the recording, take some time to complete these exercises, and then we can come back and compare what you have created to what was created in Azure and see how they match up. So good luck, and we'll see you shortly. Okay, so we'll just review the configuration of the directory that was set up previously since there's a number of components here. But to get started with a new Active Directory, if you don't have one already, it's just right there under the new option. And it's under App Services. And you just have to scroll down a little bit to find Active Directory. And then simply choose Directory. And Custom is your only option. So supply your values in here and simply go ahead and create that new Active Directory, and you'll end up with basically what I have here. Now, from that point, to add users to the directory, we just have to select the directory itself, and you can see that there's users right there. Now, this particular one, uh, both had some manual users created and some synchronization from an on-premise Active Directory, but you can create a new one right from within Azure by simply hitting your add user option right there. And you can just choose the type, which you see here is uh, either a new user in your organization, someone with an existing Microsoft account, such as an Outlook.com account, or another Azure Active Directory. So that's up to you. So we'll just go with something like the new user here, and we can just put in, uh, say test user 345 and simply choose the domain name if there were multiple directories you could choose there but we only have that one so we'll just put in their remaining information here and as far as the display name goes obviously all of this is up to you and uh, the role, you just want to make sure that they are appropriately set. So we'll just leave them at a user. And if you want to set up multi-factor authentication, then you can enable it for that user right there. That is up to you. So we'll just complete those. And you see that it will send a temporary password both to an email address and it will show you here when you choose create what it is. So it, uh, right there you see we can just copy that. The user can use that, of course, to log in at which point they'll be required to change it. And it can also be sent in an email just so you have an extra copy. But basically, that is all we need right there is to copy that so we make sure that we can paste it into a document or something like that. But that gets us our new user right there. Now, as far as multi-factor authentication goes, uh, you can see you can manage it there if you haven't yet set it up. But if you are looking at starting from scratch with multi-factor authentication, then we can just click on new. Uh, and you see there is the uh, first step that's required is the multi-factor authentication provider. So you can just go with the quick create option there, name your provider, choose the model, and whether or not you're going to link it to you to one of your existing directories. So once you have the provider set up, then you get the option to manage the multi-factor authentication, and you can just decide for yourself what kind of multi-factor authentication you want and for which users. Uh, so you can see we can enable or disable it here for various users, and we did see the option to, to uh, enable it for the user when we created them. So we can just simply hit enable there, and then we can go ahead and set up their settings right from in here. Once that has been set up, there's the option to manage the user settings. So we can uh, just specify whatever it is that we want with respect to their multi-factor authentication. And then we can also just determine at any point whether or not we want to disable or enforce the multi-user or the multi-factor authentication. So uh, that obviously is up to you and you can set those as to whatever you see fit. As for the applications, we can see that there is the applications option right there. And we can add in either 
something that your own internal organization is developing, or of course, something from a gallery. So the gallery option is uh, just pre-supplied apps. This list is growing all the time. You see thousands of applications are available. Simply choose the appropriate application. Whether or not you want to integrate single sign-on then is up to you, but very easy to get started with making these applications available to your users. And of course, if it's something that is being developed in-house, the option is right there to choose something that we are developing, supply the name, the type, and of course, then just browse to whatever location it is and whatever kind of application. Uh, you just have to supply that information and then upload the, the project or the package to that directory. And that's what we're seeing here, a web application and or a proxy application so that whatever it is you're developing in-house becomes available to your users through Azure. And then again, you can also set up things like single sign-on so that we only need a single set of credentials and we only get prompted to sign in a single time to access both the Azure environment and those applications. And that's how you set up and configure your Azure Active Directory.